Hey guys, so today I wanted to focus on what Sample Flip really does inside of Circuit and what it really is, as well as Circuit's automation recording uh, within Circuit's engine. So the easiest way for me to understand this is I think of it as a layer behind the step sequencer. So you have these moments in time that happen behind the step sequencer. So if I were to say on this step, we'll just start on synth one. I wanna hit this note. And then on this step, I wanna hit this note. And I press play. We'll slow down the tempo just so we can kind of keep up with it. Let's just play it at 90. So what this is doing is when I record the automation, there's, it's recording little bits of information and kind of sliding between them from this step to this step. That way you don't get a really kind of sharp stepped automation. It's not, uh, you're not recording the automation to the step as much as you are recording automation to that moment in time. So the best way to demonstrate this is if I hit record and then I hit play, recording with play is now enabling the automation to happen. So when I press play and I move the knob, you'll see that it turns red. So let's start low. And then if I press play and I stop recording, you can see that it jumps down. So the reason it does that is because I stopped recording around here. And whatever the last value of that recorded automation is, is gonna hold, it's gonna hold that value through the rest of the sequence. Even if I press play, lower it, you'll see that it jumps back and it's full. So if I were to put more notes here, so watch, if I lower this now, it'll then jump back to this automation and hold the highest value. So that's important to remember. And I'll try and lower it. But then it jumps back up. So that's important to remember that when you record automation, it's going to hold that last value until the rest of the sequence. But say we don't want that to happen. The easiest way to do that is you hit record while in note mode for the synths. It's a little different for the drums, and I'll explain that in a second. You select a note that you want to hit, and you, now it's flashing red. Now you can record the automation for that, so we'll lower it. So with that being done, it's going to go arise, and then after the rise, it's going to hold that value until it hits this note with that lower recorded automation, and then it's going to hold that automation through the rest of the sequence. So that means it's going to not necessarily override. Well, it, it will override any movement that you make. So watch, check this. And if you want that to act a little smoother, hit record. And then you can say on this step, even though there is nothing there, you can record the automation of where this knob will be at that moment in time behind the step sequencer. So now listen to this because this is still tailing out it still picks up a little bit and it kind of gives it that cool little whoop kind of sound so again just to reiterate to what we're listening to it's where this knob is at that moment in time because you're recording this knob movement in the step sequence. So you can see here that there's even no notes, right? But the recorded automation is still available. If you were to hit record and play some notes, you can see that they're now affected by the knobs recorded automation in that moment of time. So this is very important to remember. This can be very annoying or it can be very useful or creatively stimulating if that's even a combo of words and it allows you to kind of come up with new things for example maybe we don't like this pattern so we'll just take those notes out and maybe i'm gonna give myself a little metronome And you can 
haven't come up with new patterns. Maybe we don't like this one, right? We can just clear it out completely. And to clear the automation from a pattern, you hold down clear and you turn the knob to the left and it'll turn red. And that signifies that you have cleared the automation. So this is very important to remember. And this works for all the macro knobs, one through eight, and where they are and where what um, state they're at in each part. Again, at the same time, you can then hit record and automate a very specific moment in time, right? But the thing to remember here is that that automation that I recorded here, even though I didn't record anything on the rest of these, will be held until the end of the sequence, until it hits another moment in time that there has been recorded automation. Right? And now on to sample flip. I'm gonna to go to a blank pattern for everything. Actually, I'll just clear these patterns out, why not? Again, sample flip is no different than recording automation. It feels as if it should be a little different as in being tied to the step, which in a sense it kinda of is, but remember that there's that moment in time in the sequence behind the step sequencer. For example, if we were to say on drum one, I wanna hit these two uh, samples and we hit play. Actually, let me give myself a metronome again. And this time I'm gonna give this so I can know where the, um, the one is. And we, so what I'm doing here, sorry to go so quick. I'm hitting record. I'm gonna hit play and then hit shift and drum one to select the sample for drum number one. And then I can record the automation as if it were a macro knob into the moment of time in the sequence. So, hit play, and then I go. Kick, snare, and it's important to remember that this acts the same as the macro recorded knobs. So at this moment in time, it's the kick drum that has been recorded in and it's gonna hold the kick drum until it reaches the recorded automation of the snare in this moment in time. So we can hit velocity and we can sample, or we can play back the samples. And you can even see my recorded velocity automation as well. So this means if we were to put some more hits in here, what will this sample be? It won't be, even if we went to the sample selection page and chose this, it's not gonna be that, right? We know that because we recorded some automation. The automation of us selecting the kick drum sample and us recording the automation of the snare drum sample. So this sample is between the kick and the snare. And if we remember how the recorded automation of the macro knobs works, this value of a kick is recorded here and this value of a snare is recorded here. So if anything is in between these, it's most likely gonna be a kick. Let's see. Turn up the velocity. And same goes for any of these. If I put a couple hits here, those are most likely gonna be snares. That's because we have the recorded automation of a snare here and the recorded automation of the kick here. That's how sample flip works. The important part to remember though is no matter where you add notes, it's gonna be whatever the last recorded value or the last recorded sample was. So if we press play now, but we can change that. If we hit drum one and find a new sample, let's go to the second page, maybe this one, press play and record, and then select the sample. three samples playing on drum one. It goes kick, snare, and then the hi-hat on page two. Page one and page two. If we go look back here, 
we can see it's kick, kick snare, hat, 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 hat. But where this gets kind of cool is you can, of course, duplicate. I did a whole video on this as well. But we can say hit velocity. And I like this snare. If I hit duplicate, I can duplicate that snare around and it'll take everything in that moment in time as well as the step sequencer and duplicate it. Again, these are now snares because this automation is held until the next recorded automation. The only spots where we have recorded automation right now are here, 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 and here. I'm sorry, here. It's this one. So here, the kick, the snare, the hat, and now that turns these into hats, as well as this snare, and then these now turn into snares because they are following this recorded automation. I really hope this makes sense. I know it's a little confusing to some people, but when you understand how circuits sample flip works, it really helps to build grooves and different style drum sequences. So I'm gonna clear this pattern. And this is the way that I build drum sequences. I find the samples that I wanna use. I wanna use those two for sure. So. I hit record and then I hit play and I select those quickly. So I have them kind of like uh, on a canvas. So now, then if I go and I find another sample I want to use, maybe this one, I'll hit record. So now what I just did is I recorded those three samples. If I hit velocity so we can hear these, I'm going to raise their velocities. I have those three here ready to be placed around. So I can say duplicate the kick onto the one, duplicate the snare onto the five, and now I'm gonna duplicate the cowbell. But before I do that, I'm gonna edit the cowbell. The important thing to remember, since these two steps do not have recorded macro values, they will play off of this cowbell. So we need to go back and record these again. So now we have the kick, the snare, and then the cowbell. I can duplicate the cowbell, da, 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 and then I'll duplicate the kick there, here, here and I'll duplicate the snare there, there, and here. So what this is, is you can see how quickly the automation moves by itself. Then if I want to duplicate another cowbell, duplicate it down here. But then I can even say on this one, I want it to be a different value. Again, it's important to remember the way sample flip behaves. Um, it's, it can, again, can be annoying or it can be creatively stimulating, depends on how you want to look at it. I like to look at it as being creatively stimulating because then I have to focus on exactly how I want each hit to sound and it helps come up with this really unique um, sequence for my drums. And that's all just drum one. Even if we were to mute three, in that pattern from earlier.
So I hope this helps explain to you guys a little bit about what each part does. Thanks again for watching. Thank you so much for checking it out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll leave a link to my Instagram where I post a ton of different music, little things that I do here personally. And yeah, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.